Welcome back to part five of this series on loops. In this video, we'll cover some of the common errors and misconceptions with loops. So consider the following snippet of code. Hopefully you can see what's wrong. If we were to run this code, it would result in an infinite loop. That's because we forgot to include an increment operation to make progress towards the terminating condition. Thus, the value of i will never change and the loop will forever print one. If you ever accidentally write an infinite loop, you can kill the current running program using control C. Let's go ahead and demonstrate. Here I've got that infinite loop. An infinite loop will run forever until you kill it. To kill the current running program, you go control C and it ends your program. Now consider the following code snippet. Once again, it results in an infinite loop, but here there's a different problem. We placed an extra semicolon at the end of the while statement. We encountered a similar pitfall with conditional statements. The while statement is not really an executable statement, so we don't put a semicolon after it. By doing so, we've bound the while statement to an empty loop body. Since it makes no increment nor print operation, it's a do-nothing infinite loop. Let's take a look at it. Here again is the loop with the erroneous semicolon. It's not doing anything, but it's still caught in an infinite loop. Unfortunately, our linter won't catch this. Another problem occurs when we use poor programming style. Again, this results in an infinite loop. This time it's because we forgot the opening and closing curly brackets. This is syntactically correct, but it means that the loop will only be bound to the next immediate executable statement. In this case, the print statement on line three. Since the increment is not part of the loop body, it'll never get executed and it'll forever print one again. It's best practice to always use curly brackets even when they're not necessary, so that you don't get in the bad habit of forgetting them. Our final common error is a general category of errors called off by one errors. This is when you design your loops, but they're off by one iteration, either at the beginning or at the end or both. To illustrate this, I've pulled a real world example. The Zune was Microsoft's version of the iPod. On December 31st, 2008, Every Zune, and there weren't that many of them, froze for 24 hours. 2008 was a leap year, which meant that it had 366 days. The problem was a bug in one of the Zune submodules that contained the following code. Since December 31st was the last day, it was the 366th day of the year, so this loop started to execute. 2008 was a leap year, so this evaluated to true. However, 366 was not strictly greater than 366, so this if statement did not execute. Thus, the loop started back at the beginning without making any changes. The intention was that the days would be reset back to zero and the year would be incremented. 24 hours later, it became the 367th day, so the if statement would actually execute and the problem solved itself, at least until the next leap year. No matter how clever or smart or skilled of a coder you are, small mistakes like this are inevitable. That's why it's extremely important to test your software and to consider and test corner or edge cases like this.